All right, I'm gonna show the basic functions of everything inside of the camper. Uh, first, as you enter the rear door, you have the control panel here. So you have your ceiling lights, and then you have your awning light for outside. Not on, shut off. Then you have a switch here for the water pump. Now when the water pump is running, it's only pulling the water that is stored on board the fresh tank. You don't need to run this if you're already hooked up to um, a water hose at a campground or a house. So if, you have, if you're on city water, you don't need to run this, only if you're boondocking when you're not hooked up to water. And you need to make sure if you're running this that the fresh tank is actually full. Now, right up here you have these gauges and you just push the button to find the levels. Now, the only ones that are gonna be accurate are gonna be the battery and it's always gonna show full if the, if the uh, camper is hooked up to a house or um, hooked up to electricity, city power. Then the battery only runs, if you're not hooked up to power, the only thing that the battery will run will be the lights and some fans. It will not run the TV or power any of the power outlets. So you have to be hooked up to power to run the TV, to run the fan, run the air conditioner. You can run the heat on the battery, but it will the fan will drain the battery fairly quickly. The black water level will not always be accurate, nor will the gray or the it's showing all these have, these are all, all these tanks are empty right now, but they're showing like they're full. And it's just because the sensors uh, get dirty. Now, right here on this switch, you have gas and you have electric, and that's for the water heater. You can run <clears throat> the water heater on both at the same time. If you're only hooked up to a regular 110 outlet, like say at a house, and, that, and by the way, that outlet will need to be at least 20 amps. Um, if you're running 20 amps, you can run the air conditioner, but you will probably need to run the water heater only on gas and the refrigerator on gas. And I'll get to that in a moment. But if you're hooked up at a campground with 30 amp service, you can run everything just fine. Except I would avoid, if you're gonna use the microwave a lot, if you're only hooked up, if you're hooked, even if you're hooked up to 30 amp power and you're running the air conditioner and you're running the uh, water heater on electricity and you're running the refrigerator on electricity, you might wanna just turn the water heater off of electricity if you're gonna be cooking a lot or using the microwave a lot. But you oftentimes we'll leave this on all day. And then when we get back from our ventures outside we'll come in to take the showers we'll turn the gas heat on and it really helps a lot with the flow of the the heating uh, speed of the water this button here is to operate the slide I'll make a separate video for that about how you want to make sure everything is out of the way of the slide and you want to also make sure everything is out of the way on the outside exterior of the camper before you operate the slide because once you start operating the slide, uh, you want to try to avoid stopping while operating because it has four independent motors that have to work simultaneously. So if you stop, there's a chance that one could get off. It could get off track. So you want to try to pull it in and out at the same time. If I have set this camper up, if you're renting this camper, um, I've already used that. So you will need to avoid pressing this button at all times. This is for the awning. Now, I'll make a separate video on the awning as well, but that controls the awning in and out, and you wanna make sure you keep the awning in under windy conditions. You don't wanna move the camper uh, with the awning out, obviously, and when you take the awning out, you want to make sure you don't go all the way out. Just when you see that silver, just stop and let that flap go down. So I could, I could press it out a little bit longer, but try to avoid doing that. And then when you roll the awning back in, you also wanna make sure it goes all the way in. And like it's raining right now, there's a unique feature that you can kind of tilt these. It'll do it automatically. If this collects a lot of water, it will tilt one way or the other, but I recommend sliding this in 
I'll do a whole nother video about the awning operation. But you can slide that and tilt the awning to let the water drain out one side or the other. Now getting back to the interior of the camper, you have the door here and you have two doors basically. It's a screen door and a main door. So they separate by right here. You can have the screen door, you can have that one open. Slide and you can also move this underneath the lock and that kind of locks the door. And then there's a magnet holding the door closed. You can pull that. And this is the deadbolt for the lock. You can lock from the exterior, you can lock this latch, and you can also lock the deadbolt. Uh, moving on to the recliners. They uh, do recline by push pulling this pull tab, tab on the side. On this side, it's on the right-hand side. On, on this recliner, it's right there. You pull, it, you pull this tab up and it reclines and it also goes out. And also you have lights. And then also these are heated. And then if you wanna lock this from being touched, so now you can't touch it or move it, you can, that's what the lock button is for. All right, then you have your TV, your remote. This remote is for the DVD and radio. Uh, you have a fuse panel down here. This lowers down. I'll make a separate video on this. You pull this out and then this will fold down and relax and be on so where you could take the cushions and make a, a separate bed. Um, here's the refrigerator. It, right now, when you have this on auto, it's gonna select, if there's enough power, it will run on uh, alternating current. If there's not enough power, you have this button pushed off, it will start running on propane. If you see this light on, turn it off, select it to be on auto, only if you're on power. If you're on just running on your boondocking or you're in a driveway or you're needing to run the AC while you are on only 110, a 110 outlet, you'll need to run this with on gas. Here you can select the how much it's cooling. Over here we have your coffee maker, sink, silverware, you have pots and pans have a stove here. I'll have the gas turned on. So each dial represents, so we'll light this one the way you light it. You just turn it to where it says light. You'll hear the gas coming out. You simply turn that and it lights the stove. You may need to try this a few times. It might need to, the gas may need to be primed through the line. You got your light here, fan, microwave, if you're renting this camper, we supply you with dishes, Tupperware, coffee cups, glasses, everything you need to cook. This is a top that extends out. We put provide a garbage can here. This will, if you slide the slide in, you gotta make sure this is folded down. All right, now we have the bathroom. It's a privacy door, unlatch this latch slides to give privacy from the living quarters and the kitchen. There's also another door on the other side to give privacy from the bedroom. So you have a door here on the slide. All right, so you have your sink, your shower, and your toilet. Now we'll talk about the tanks while we're here in the in the restroom. There's one gray tank for the shower and this sink, and there's a gray tank for the dishes. You have about a day or two of just regular dishwashing and shower use. I would recommend do, taking a shower within 10 minutes or less if you're gonna stay for multiple days, if you're not planning on draining the tank. If you're at a campsite, have full hookups, this is not an issue. You can take Hollywood showers all you want. Um, the black tank, however, we recommend leaving that closed and only flushing that, uh, draining that 
about every couple of days. I'll make a separate video on draining the tanks. We also provide you with some paper towels, extra towels and cloths. And also going into the bedroom here, we have a brand new mattress. We keep everything new and clean. Six pillows, plenty of storage. And on this unit, you have a USB outlet and a regular plug outlet. Now we come to the thermostat. So right now, I'm hooked up to my garage outlet, a 20 amp, 110 outlet. And I'll go through a few things. I'll make a separate video on just the thermostat. So mode, you hit mode. It goes off, so you hit mode one more time. It goes to a fan, and you can select low, or you can select auto. If you leave it on auto, the fan's going to kick on and off. It's only going to come on when the furnace is on or the AC needs to be on. So if you're running the AC while this fan is set in the auto position, it's going to click off and on quite a bit. So I recommend just leave it in the low or the high position. So I like to use it in the low position. It's a little less noisy and it's not that much slower than the high position. So now I've, the fan has kicked on. I can hear that running. So we select furnace or go through right after a fan, you get to the a AC and then, you, and then you just stop right there. Then you can select your temperature. If for some reason it's accidentally gotten put on Celsius, you just tap these two buttons at the same time to bring it back to Fahrenheit. This unit is it's pretty sensitive. So if it could possibly, if you walk by it and go, you could accidentally turn the air conditioner off. So just make a note of that and be careful. You got the switch here for the bedroom lights. Here's your fire escape. This screen will pop out and you can escape that way. You can leave that window open to get breeze if you're not running the air conditioner. You got storage up here. You also have a, 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 an entry and exit door just for the bedroom. There's a fan here in the bathroom. There's also a switch right here. This, And so it's a double switch. So if this is on, this switch is on, it'll, it'll run. But if this switch is off, it won't run despite this switch being on. So let's make a note of that. Here's your shower. And that's pretty much it. Hope this video was helpful. I'll make other separate videos that are shorter explaining each process.